We have seen a few tweets and teasers from the team at Bioware working on the next Dragon Age installment. What can we expect from the next game based on what we have? Stay tuned. We have acquired a lot of questions, more than answers, from what Bioware had given us so far. What's up with Solus collecting fragments of souls from old gods and mythal? Will Solus be the main antagonist? Or can we coerce him to join forces and achieve a greater good for Thetis? What could be Solus's real motivation? Restoring the previous Alvan Empire? His people's immortality? Turning back time? What is up with the fresco from the trailer? I was Solus first. Fan Harel came later. An insult I took as a badge of pride. Trespasser ended with Solus being comforted by Mitha, who we know as Flemeth. She acquired the soul of the old god from Kirin, our old god baby, courtesy of Morrigan, and stored it away through the Alluvion from which Solus was standing in Prana. They shared their pains and regrets of the past until Solus seemingly absorbed Mithal's life force, her soul, to restore his own. Is this what Flemeth mentioned, the means to an end? The end of what? Surely the buildup on Solus's character through Inquisition and the books that followed is not something to disregard to have them turn Solus into a mean, green, Thetis destroying machine, is it? Solus does not strike me like some overpowered Corypheus or anything. Maybe he can be an anti-hero that we will have the opportunity to salvage by the second or third act of the game. Surely there are some other things that may prove more dangerous than him. Double blights, Kunari invasion... Before we start thinking about what we can expect from Solas, we should learn first of his motives. It all began very long ago, when elves were still immortal, and the physical world coexists in the same space as the Fade. A lot of the ancient Alvan technology and infrastructures are tied together with the physical world and the Fade. They say that magic sings for an eternity throughout Thetis and that magic is as natural as breathing for these ancient elves. True to the nature of any civilization, there brewed a war which gave birth to the strongest of Alvan the Avenuris. These leaders became respected elders, then kings, eventually gods. Within this pantheon, there was still bickering through centuries of existing together, constantly trying to tilt the favor of power towards themselves. Sola sees this bickering and hopes to find a way to end it. He was Solus first, before Fen Harel. The Dreadwolf was a name they would call him that soon enough he wore as a badge of pride. The Evanurus killed Mithal, which triggered Solus to trick them, lock them away, and create the veil that separates the Fade from the physical world. This is by no means a simple feat, considering that Solus is one of the ancient elven gods. By doing so, however, he thought this will free the elven people from slavery. Slavery from the Evanuris. Upon waking a year before he joined the Inquisition, he found out that his actions led to the elves losing their immortality, losing most of their touch to magic, losing their homeland, Arlathan, and eventually losing themselves their identity. The orb should have restored his power, the mark should have allowed him to enter the Fade physically and tear the veil from within, but the Inquisition got in his way. Corypheus became immortal, the Inquisitor got the mark, and the orb was destroyed in the final ensuing battle. 
the Dalish sees him as a trickster god. In the crossroads, we learn, however, through the Alluvians, that Solus was actually a hero. He led a war against the Evanuris and the Forgotten Ones, won, and lived to free his people. He now sought to fix the aftermath of his actions and bring back what he had taken away from his people. He has agents across Thetis collecting information, artifacts, anything that can help with their objectives. Ultimately, what Solus plans is to break the veil he created, allowing the Fade to come pouring down on the physical world once more. This will lead to the destruction of the current world, bringing back what he had taken away from his people. Upon tearing the veil asunder, this will lead to the freedom of the false gods, whom he locked away in the Fade. He has plans on taking them on as well, but how is yet to be revealed. Solus finds the current world precious, though he is more than willing to burn it down to bring his people back. He helped prevent the Kunari invasion as he wants the people to die in comfort instead of under Kunari rule when he executes his plans. Does this mean we might get missions that will force us to work with the agents of Fen Harel? From how I see this, there is a whole lot of mess in Thetis that our new protagonist will be facing aside from getting more information on Solus's plans. Some of it, we might even need his help, such as the imminent Kinari invasion and possibly another blight or two. I am still hoping that Solus is some anti-hero that plots to bitterly destroy the world to bring his people back but we get to find a way for him to do so without destroying the world apart. Having said all that, we are not expecting the new Dragon Age game to come out until the second half of 2022, so you can expect more of this type of content in the future whenever we get more juicy news about Dragon Age. As Solus did say, I will treasure the chance to be wrong again, my friend.